Good morning. Good morning, Maria. It's good to be here. This is Stacy with Northwest Senior and Disability Services. And uh, Alyssa, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. A little sound check one more time. And um, welcome to the show. I have Alyssa Dolman, who is the Tobacco Cessation Coordinator in Clatsop County. She works at Columbia Memorial Hospital in Astoria, for those of you who are uh, not familiar and are not as familiar with Clatsop County. And I'm very excited. The Year of Wellness has uh, connected me with Alyssa so that we can talk about your role in as a tobacco cessation coordinator, what you do up in Clatsop County, and maybe we can get some tips for people that are thinking about making some lifestyle changes around tobacco uh, for in Tillamook. So welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. Great being here. So what, let's maybe start with what tobacco cessation means. That's, I have people when I'm talking about this subject often say that like cessation, what why is that an important word? And uh, tell me a little bit about what that means and what you do up in Clatsop County. Yeah, cessation, probably not a, you know, a word well known to a lot of people. It means quit. To, right. uh, so I essentially help quit people um, and support them in their, in their journey and process in quitting, quitting tobacco. Excellent. That's a big job because that's not easy to do as those any people that might be listening that have struggled for a long time with um, smoking or chewing tobacco and now the new thing is vaping and all those things. Um, so what do you think uh, some of the, the challenges are um, and successes that you've had in helping support people uh, kind of combat tobacco use? Yeah, the, the challenge is, is tobacco use is... Um a huge addiction. Um, most people would say it's the most addictive, nicotine's the most addictive substance out there. Um, and it also, using tobacco also becomes a huge habit. So mm-hmm. those intertwine together. So ideally what you do is you treat the addiction to nicotine with, with medications and nicotine replacement therapy, which is a fancy phrase for the patches gum, uh, nicotine lozenges. There's also a nicotine inhaler and nicotine nasal spray. Mm-hmm. So you ideally treat the addiction with medications. And the good news is, as I just mentioned, there's many, many options out there. There's also Wellbutrin and Chantix, two pills. Um, and you also treat the habit of, of smoking. So you work on behavior changes. You work on identifying triggers, changing your patterns and lifestyle outside of using tobacco. And so, and so it sounds like, I mean, there's a lot of layers to this. I think that the old school thought was, I just need to quit cold turkey, but that doesn't always work very well, does it? No, would not recommend that ideally. Um, cold turkey would mean no medications, no support, no appointments with someone like me or the uh, quit line, which is 1-800-QUIT-NOW, Q-U-I-T-N-O-W. It's a free service, a free phone call. I have been told you're on the phone for about 20 or 30 minutes the first time you call. Oh, wow. though, so um, I like to let people know that that is, give them a heads up that if you, if or when you do call, you know, you, you'll be on the phone for a little while. So that's 1-800-QUIT-NOW. But um, it's, it's certainly a process and quitting cold turkey has about a four to seven percent success rate. So, wow. um, you know, ideally you would be using medications or some sort of nicotine replacement therapy for however long you need to, to not go back to smoking or using other tobacco products or nicotine products, um, and then getting that support um, from, you know, individual face-to-face appointments with, you know, someone in my position or, like I said, the quit line. Um, There's also websites available um, for online support as well. Okay. So, um, you know, the the Chantix and Wellbutrin, now those are... Um, those are medications that are often uh, treat anxiety and things like that. Is that true? Yeah, well, Butrin does. Mm-hmm. It, um, it's actually an initially um, was designed for an antidepressant, mm-hmm. um, which they have then found for some people can help with quitting smoking or decreasing decreasing their use. And then mm-hmm. Chantix is, is primarily used for tobacco cessation. So oh, okay. it, it blocks the feel-good chemicals in the brain. Um, so after about, everyone's different, of course, but after about five to usually 15 days, um, the person on Chantix just doesn't um, Have that get desire. the pleasure from smoking anymore. Interesting. So, yeah. you know, I really, it sounds like a take home is that, you know, this is, it's, 
uh, anybody that smokes or has a tobacco uses tobacco probably knows or thinks sometimes about quitting. Would that be fair to say, you know, that they're not, you know, that we hear all these health things and, you know, the adverse effects and, but it's kind of, it's scary to try and quit, especially if you're somebody that's been a lifetime smoker and you have that habit so deeply ingrained in you. Oh yeah, exactly. And, you know, many, many years ago, um, a lot of people, probably the majority did, use tobacco and um, didn't realize or know the health effects and issues that, that it causes. There's 7,000 chemicals in, in cigarettes, and so um, it's, a, it's a huge... 7,000 chemicals? Yep, 7,000. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> that's really significant. And now, um, now what is, what's your take on... Uh, there's a lot of people that uh, are... They hear that those statistics and that information. So they think, well, I'm just going to smoke cigarettes that are 100% tobacco because it's not as unhealthy. Do you, what is your thoughts about that? Do you buy into that school? I would say anything that you um, smoke or any of these nicotine products aren't good for you. Um, The, their marketing, which um, the tobacco industry spends billions and billions and billions of dollars a year for marketing and advertising um, to get young people hooked and, mm-hmm. and to also portray that, you know, these other forms or types or brands aren't as bad for you. Um, and there's ways that the tobacco industry can get around that to make it seem like they're better. Um, and essentially, you know, none of, none of them are, are good for you. And now the new thing is vaping. Right. Which will you explain, you know, I've never, I don't know a lot about vaping, vaping, but I remember one time I was a a, a assisted living administrator and I, vaping was the new thing and Mm -hmm. we're sitting in a meeting and the, one of my staff just pulls out an e-cigarette and starts smoking it. And I'm like, what is happening? Because there's people think like, you know, oh, it's just vaping. It's not actual smoke. It's not, it's not, uh anything it's health it's a healthy alternative but will you explain what vaping is exactly and what the chemicals you know what that looks like just for people that are not as familiar like yeah. I was <laughs> in that moment <Yeah. laughs> vaping is the term for a person that's using a, an electronic cigarette an mm-hmm. e-cig an e-cigarette um it's a newer product out there it's it's a battery operated um there is what they call vapor that comes out after, you know, a exhale of a person that, that uses the um, electronic cigarettes. And at this point, um, I would not recommend them for any reason, not mm-hmm. for trying to quit, not, you know, to, to use in places, you know, where you can't smoke and that sort of thing. And the reason for that is, is we, we don't know a ton about the electronic cigarettes, but we do know that there are harmful chemicals in them, including in the vapor that's released after exhale. Um, and we just don't have the information yet of people using them for 20, 30, 40, right. you know, plus, plus years. So at this point, if a person's really wanting to quit or if they're in a place where they can't um, smoke or use tobacco for, you know, lengthy periods of time, I would just highly recommend, in those cases, probably the nicotine gum or nicotine lozenges, just because they're in lower doses and you control the amount that you use per day, mm-hmm. and they're short-acting. They're short acting. So um, those would be my recommendations in those situations. I gotcha. And the patch, uh, you know, are people still using patch patches for... Uh you know, to get a small dose of... Oh, yeah. 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 Um, They come in 21, 14, and 7 milligrams. Of course, anyone age 18 and over can get them over the counter. However, um, they... Tobacco cessation services and nicotine replacement therapy, again, fancy phrase for the nicotine products, and medications are often covered by health insurance. Mm -hmm. So I'd encourage anyone to, you know, check to see what is covered because most health insurance do cover these services because it's um, cheaper for them to do that than to continue having people on their plans, you know, continue using tobacco since tobacco is the number one preventable cause of death in the United States and um, quitting is one of the best things you can do for your health. We lose 480,000 uh, people in the U.S. every year um, due to tobacco use. That that means 1,300 deaths are occurring every day from it. So Wow. And is that like primarily uh, lung damage or is there other things that come up because of smoke? Because I, I kind of associate like lung cancer and, and things like that to smoking, but does nicotine impact other forms of 
cancer and health risks. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it essentially affects your whole body. Those 7,000 chemicals every time Ugh. you're smoking is, um, you know, going throughout your whole body. So, yeah, of course, lung cancer and, and other cancers are probably the, the most known or, you know, what you associate it with. But um, there's, I mean, the list goes on and on. There's COPD, there's emphysema. Yeah. And some of these things, you know, you can live for quite, you know, many years or a fair amount of time with some of these issues. However, sometimes, I mean, it's just a struggle, you know, breathing and that sort of, that sort of thing. So, and those, that 480,000 per year um, also includes secondhand smoke exposure. So 41,000 deaths of those a year are from people that don't use tobacco, but they're, you know, they're exposed to it. And um, Clatsop County, just like Tillamook County, has a high tobacco use in comparison with other counties around the state, right? Yeah, we do, unfortunately. I mean, that number is going down, which is which is um, fabulous. Um, right now, the number in the U.S. as a whole is 15.1%. And many years ago, that was like 22 to 24% when oh, I, wow. you know, when I started um, doing doing some of this work. So, you know, I, in my role, a lot of times I refer to my work as baby steps because mm-hmm. we don't always see, you know, the immediate um, e- effects of our, our work and support because it's a huge process and, and quitting is difficult. And the average person seriously tries to quit about 9 to 11 times before, wow. before they're successful. But every quit attempt gets the person to that final quit, which is, which is, Nice to know, and that there's many options, you know, and support out there, and that insurance often covers it. Yeah, I think that um, people don't realize that sometimes. And so I'm going to just kind of hit pause for a second, and we're going to just hear a little word from our sponsor. But if you're just tuning in, I'm with uh, Alyssa Dolman from the Columbia Memorial Hospital in Astoria, and we're talking about resources related to uh, tobacco cessation. So uh, Tillamook Regional Medical Center's monthly Club Chip Complete Health Improvement Program is the third Monday of the month at 630 in the lower level of the Adventist Church. This month, Club Chip is about nutrition and willpower. You'll learn about foods rich in nutrients that decrease anxiety and improve mood, how to decrease cravings and increase uh, your overall healthier gut bacteria affecting your behavior. No charge uh, for this informative program, and you can RSVP 503-815-2270 or call our local Tillamook Regional Medical Center for more information. So it's a little word from, from the hospital. They continue to do their monthly club chip, and I I love that program. I hear so many uh, positive stories about uh, all the resources that they provide. So Thank you very much to the hospital. And so if you're just tuning in, like I said, this is Stacy with Northwest Senior and Disability Services talking with Alyssa Dolman. And so we're talking about quitting smoking and all the resources or chewing all these different things, which is a prominent issue uh, for our health. It's in our communities and all those kinds of things. Um, and there are resources out there, right, Alyssa? Yes. Yes, there are. There's, um, you know, great support. There's coverage from health insurance for tobacco cessation services and medications to assist in quitting. Um, There's the quit line, 1-800-QUIT-NOW, Q-U-I-T-N-O-W. It's a free service. It's a free call. Um, Again, I mentioned earlier, you know, you can be on the phone for about 20 or 30 minutes when you do call them. If you qualify for free um, nicotine replacement therapy, the last I checked, it was two weeks free supply of nicotine gum or lozenges, or oh, excuse wow. me, nicotine gum or patches, um, which isn't ideally, you know, the uh, the two week supply is is the whole idea on that is is you receive those and then you, that gives you a jump start to to ideally save the money that you would normally spend on tobacco products to, to then continue with with the with the process. And there's also um, online support. There's www.becomenx.org. Um, so become, N-A-N-X, E-X dot O-R-G. Um, there's also the American Cancer Society. And so some great online support as well. Wow. 
that, you know, I love that. So, so we're not just saying, Hey, here's the health impact and this is really bad and you need to quit, but actually your insurance covers it. There's strategies that are out there, you know, so when you're, and you do one-on-one visits with people to help them with this, uh, to make a behavior change. Isn't that right? Yeah. So I, I have, um, individual face-to-face appointments with, anyone here within, you know, the community and across the river in Washington, because we're right across the sure. Columbia River. And um, so, yeah, I have face-to-face appointments with, with people, um, almost always covered by health insurance. And the initial appointment takes about 45 to 60 minutes. And um, in that first appointment where I'm gaining, you know, um, a, a history, current use, past quit attempts, if any, and that sort of thing, and then coming up with a quit plan for them, and um, then eventually, you know, working on relapse prevention and that sort of thing. I can do everything but prescribe, so gotcha. I work with a person's primary care physician, um, you know, to get any prescriptions filled for them. Well, and that's amazing, because I think that, um, you know, there. Do you, do you think it's a kind of a taboo subject? Like, you know, if we need to go to the doctor because we have a cold or, you know, we stub our big toe, whatever it is, that's, that's an acceptable reason to go. But sometimes I think socially, uh, people have more of a a challenge admitting, hey, I need some help. And I need some resources. And I need a person that can really walk me through this challenge. And what do what would you say to those people that kind of are just struggling with the idea that they're going to have to ask for help? Yeah, I, I, you know, most people that use tobacco really do want to quit. And Mm -hmm. They wish that they would have never started in the first place. And, you know, I meet with some people individually that, you know, almost feel shamed or embarrassed that they're still, you know, using tobacco, especially with the more stricter laws and regulations around it. And, and, um, you know, I just reassure them that, you know, I focus a lot or quite a bit on, you know, the addiction and habit of it. And using tobacco becomes so ingrained in a person's life, sometimes, you know, you're just doing it and you don't really realize or or know, you know, that you're doing it in the sense that it just becomes such a huge habit. So I would encourage those that are maybe, you know, contemplating the idea of quitting or working on quitting, or maybe they've worked on it before and, and it wasn't as successful for as long as they were hoping to, you know, to just... Um, to continue trying and and to look at the resources that you do have and get that get that support because it's a it's a huge deal. Well, you 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 struck a, a you know you said a word that I think is important with this and you talked about there's some people feel a little bit of shame mm-hmm. um, as they you know, because they can't kind of get over this hump. And the example that I think of is I was talking with somebody who said, you know, they'll go home at night and after their work day and they smoke and then they don't want to go back out in public because they worry that they're going to have it, the smell on their clothes or all these things. And so it started to impact her in a negative way socially, just because, you know, she was worried about all these other parts and she didn't want people to know. Do you think that happens to a lot of people where they're kind of closet tobacco users and, and uh, because it isn't as socially accepted as it once was? Yeah, I th- I think so. Um, you know, pe- some people are, you know, a-, a little embarrassed and ashamed about it, and maybe don't want people to to know that they used tobacco, or maybe they quit and then um, relapsed and started back up again. But wish people, you know, don't want people to still know that. So um, I would just encourage people to, you know. Keep keep trying. Um, every quit attempt gets you to that final quit. You know what to do. You know what to not do, mm-hmm. um, and and just to to move forward, accept and acknowledge. You know the slip up or relapse or whatnot, and and move forward. And if you've never ever tried to quit before, which I I see some um, people that really never have either. Um, you know it's never too late to quit or work on quitting. Mm-hmm. And um, some people will say, you know, quitting's the easy part. It's staying quit. Right. That's the most yeah. difficult. And that's, it's easy that's to quit. Really I've done truth. it a thousand times. You ever yep. heard that one? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to take another little break real quick. Uh, where do you go to find almost anything you need for home improvement? 
I'll tell you where. Rosenberg's. Rosenberg's has been your local connection for anything you need to build and finish your house to perfection. Carpet, cabinets, paint, electrical, plumbing, nuts and bolts, fencing, windows, doors, and so much more. All those items in one place, but that's only part of the story. What really makes Rosenberg's your stop for home improvement is their people. Their knowledgeable, friendly staff is there to help you through any project. Any question from what paint you should use to how to install a new shower valve, you can get the help you need and do it right the first time. Stop by Rosenberg's today to rediscover what you've known all along. It's better to shop local and work with great people that you can see every day. Build it, plumb it, wire it, paint it. Rosenberg Builder Supply in Tillamook. So if you're just tuning in, this is Stacy Zerker, Northwest Senior and Disability Services. And I'm talking with Alyssa Dolman, who has uh, called in from Columbia Memorial Hospital up in Astoria today to talk about uh, tobacco cessation and quitting. Uh, we were talking about this quit line. Do you find, Alyssa, that it's hard sometimes? Like people, when they start talking about it, it just makes them want to smoke more. Like they may be able to distract themselves for a little while. Or so is it counterproductive to use those resources or or what is the success rate? I'm kind of playing the devil's advocate a little bit, but I want people to understand the process and what it feels like and why this is a positive thing to walk towards. Yeah. No, your your comment on, you know, bringing it up and then wanting to smoke more, that comes up sometimes um, with impatience because I see pa- patients in the hospital uh, bedside. Um, so that, that can come up sometimes, you know, oh, I didn't think about smoking till, and, I, and I'll sometimes finish their sentence, what, until I came in here and started asking you about uh, it? And, yeah. and my main role with the, with the impatience is um, primarily my, you know, one of my main roles is to make sure, you know, offer nicotine replacement therapy. We offer uh, all three um, levels of tobacco, or excuse me, nicotine patches, and then we have the uh, nicotine gum and lozenges as well. So my main role is to offer that to them um, if they don't already have it on and if they do, you know, to see how it's working and, and to essentially help them feel more comfortable in within the hospital. Um, and But for those individual face-to-face appointments, you know, they're they're there because there's, you know, they're they're motivate, motivated. They're right. ready. They're they're um, wanting to really work on this. And some people I've I've met, you know, have been um, thinking about quitting for months, you know, months and months, six months before before maybe they have decided to to come see me. But um, so it's kind of you know everyone's different, and um, for the individual appointments, you know, they're they're really ready to to work on this. So that's amazing. Well, it's really, it's neat that there is, there are options out there for people. Um, And there's some risks, like people need to know things like, if you're wearing a patch, you shouldn't smoke, right? (laughs) And I think that people don't understand those kind of high risk things as you're going through this process too, right? Yeah, I mean, ideally, ideally, you, ideally, you wouldn't, I'm certainly Mm -hmm. not encouraging that. However, times have changed on, on some of that stuff. Years ago, when I was um, trained and I go to conferences every couple uh, every couple of years. You know, it'd be you know set a quit date, stick to that, this and that. And now um, another avenue to that is is um, you know doing the gradual decrease in use. Mm-hmm. So everyone's going to be everyone's going to be different. Um, I yeah, I certainly wouldn't recommend or encourage you to smoke while you're on the patch. Um, however. How do I put this? It's um, not as bad as what people think it, it would be, but I certainly would not recommend it. <laughs> right, right. And so as far as, I mean, we're talking about these treatment plans and uh, strategies using the inhalers and the and the gum and the lozenges, but, you know, you're also, I think it's really important to highlight that there's also a lot of behavior modification because people, you know, if they use, if every morning they get up and light up a cigarette and have their cup of coffee or yep. when they're working, you know, you're a truck driver and putting a, uh, a dip in, you know, as they yeah, say, yeah. um, you know, what are some strategies you can use? You kind of just touched on it a little bit as far as just minimizing, or do you stretch out the times in between the tobacco use or what are other strategies that you recommend for your, your, the people that you're working with, uh, to help with the behavior and the habit? Yeah. Piece? Yeah. There's many, everyone's different. There's many options. Some of that can kind of depend on the, their treatment plan of, you know, whether you're setting a 
quit date and sticking to it or if you're doing the gradual process. But, but yeah, there's ways, like you said, to extend the time in between cigarettes. Um, if you're hopefully maybe smoking just outside, that can naturally decrease your use, mm-hmm. especially with uh, winter, you know, and our weather coming. Um, if you have a place that you normally um, buy your tobacco products, try to avoid that place as much as possible um, mm-hmm. if you're really, you know, working on quitting because you associate that location with buying, you know, buying your, your cigarettes or sure. shit tobacco. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you, if you, you know, a lot of people, you know, have it, like you said, with a cup of coffee. So um, if you're working on quitting to have something else in your hand, um, with that cup of coffee, a pen, a pencil, a paper clip, a worry stone, a stress ball, um, something else tangible, you know, in your hand with that cup of coffee. And if you sit at a certain spot um, while you're doing that, especially in the morning after you haven't typically often smoked, you know, for four, six, eight, whatever hours prior, um, then trying to avoid that air area. So, Find for example, <laughs> if you smoke on your front porch or mm-hmm. in the backyard, you know, avoid in the mornings with your coffee, avoid uh, avoiding those areas. So, um, I would also, you know, uh, identifying triggers, you know, is is important. So, is it with a cup of coffee? Is it is it while you're driving? Is it after a meal? Is it all of the above? Mm-hmm. So, finding just different ways and things to put in your hands can be important as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. And do you think the buddy system is uh, kind of helpful with with the process of making change where maybe you and a friend quit at the same time or go through a go? I shouldn't say quit because the just cold turkey thing as we talked about, it's, it's a good, good try, but isn't as effective as some of these other strategies. But uh, that kind of fellowship of maybe going for a walk together instead. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that no, that, that's great. Buddy system's great. Sometimes, you know, spouses or partners will um, uh, work, you know, together, support each other. If you have a, a family or friend, um, support system's great. Um, and sometimes that does isn't the case. Sometimes you have a significant other that, you know, you really want to quit, but they, you know, aren't ready yet. And yeah. that can be difficult, but it's not impossible, and you just have to you know, accept that and, and work towards that. And, and you never know, they may pick up oftentimes, then they will, you know, work on it. Maybe not at the exact same time as, as the other person, but maybe it's a couple few months later, you know, they're like, Oh, Hey, um, I, I need and want to do this as well. So, well, and they might naturally, you know, taper down the amount of tobacco, tobacco use they use when, you know, they don't have a partner walking yes. outside with them because of that social element to it or something like that. Exactly. And I understand that there's a new statewide law that's coming up as of January 1st as well, right? Yeah, bill passed um, starting January here, 2018. Um, The age is going to increase to 21 to purchase tobacco. So it's called Tobacco 21. And the whole idea around that is to prevent, um, you know, young people from 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 starting. So that mm-hmm. will be in effect starting in January, and that will also include um, electronic cigarettes, the oh, e too. So that's going to be a big deal. I went, no, now was that that was a voted measure? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I wonder, you know, I I I'm sure th- I'm glad to hear that because it really will make some changes. But I'm sure that was a little bit. Uh, there was a lot of uh, heated debate on both sides of that argument, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is, especially for those 18 to 21-year-olds that right. have, you know, been, because about 90 or over 90% of those that use tobacco really started before the age of 18 or 19. So um, most people, if they're, if they're starting, they're starting by the time they're 18 or 19. So, you know, it's going to be, you know, a, a huge adjustment, especially for those 18 to 21 year olds. Um, right. part of, part of this, and I think, you know, one of the important reasons of why it was, um, pursued and passed is Oregonians spend three billion with a B, with a B as in boy, billion dollars a year treating tobacco relate, related illnesses. Wow. So this, that's just this tobacco in our state. 21 should, you Oof. know, naturally cut down on those costs. That is crazy. That and that's just in our state. That's not even throughout the country. No, yeah, huh. through just our state, just Oregon. It's a lot of 
That's crazy. Um, and then the Great American Smokeout is coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. The annual Great American Smokeout's next Thursday, November 16th. Um, it's always the third Thursday in November. Um, and the whole idea on the Great American Smokeout is to encourage people that use tobacco to at least quit, at least for the day, and then in hopes that, you know, that one day turns into two and three and so on. Um, here in Clatsop County, we're distributing about 750 quit kits in both North and South County. Those will be in various um, areas throughout our county, the college, some coffee shops, of course, the, our hospital, um, Providence Seaside Hospital, um, some local businesses as well. And the quit kit is a sandwich baggie um, full of non-nicotine items to assist people for at least the day for the Great American Smoke It to quit. So there's a paper clip, um, there's a bag of tea, there's a piece of gum, there's a hard candy, there's a worry stone, some tips hmm. and tricks um, on quitting, some things to do instead of smoking. So I'd encourage like you know, hobbies and exercise and, um, this is a good marketing opportunity for people that are selling fidget spinners. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there you go. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a play, uh, one, um, other option. <laughs> yeah, too funny. Um, so I'm going to just take a minute really quick and read off, uh, some, a couple of activities that are happening this weekend. Uh, a, a nod and thank you to our sponsors today, Rosenberg Builder Supply and Tillamook Regional Medical Center. Uh, happy birthday to Dina Dolan and RJ uh, Winia. I think I'm butchering, butchering that name. I think it's Winia. Um, and then Monday, we'll have the OSU Extension Service will be on air uh, for Tillamook today at 930 Senior meals are 11.30 a.m. at St. Mary's by the Sea in Rockaway every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They're at noon every weekday at the Kiwanda Community Center in Pacific City, as well as the Tillamook Center at 4th and Stillwell. And uh, daily at the, uh, or Tuesdays and Thursdays at the Methodist Church in New Halem as well. The cost is $3 for seniors and six seventy five dollars for everyone else. The Holiday Bazaar is this weekend at the fairgrounds, Friday noon to 7, Saturday 10 to 5, and there's vendors, raffles, food, creative gifts, and more. Tapa's newest comedy continues this weekend, Money Matters, which shows Friday and Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 2. Tickets for this hilarious show are available at Diamond Art Jewelers, 842-7940. Nastucca High School is also performing their fall play this weekend, Friday and Saturday. This year, they're doing two murder mysteries with audience participation. Go Bobcats. Uh, and then Saturday, we can't forget, it's Veterans Day tomorrow. Saturday, the Tillamook Air Museum is hosting a Veterans Day celebration starting at 11. Enjoy the River City Bagpipes and Drums, Coast Guard Color Guard, Tillamook Community Chorus, among other perform performers. And there is a breakfast served at the Air Base Cafe from 7.30 to 10.30. So just to go back, Aly Alyssa, thank you again for coming uh, on the show today and talking about this really important issue um, I want to just kind of loop back around to some of the resources that you were talking about. The quit line, once again, what that phone number was. Yeah, 1-800-QUIT-NOW. So 1-800-Q-U-I-T-N-O-W. Mm -hmm. And then become an X.org, EX.org. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's, a great, it's a great one, great support. Uh -huh. blogs and, um, you know, other people going through the process of working on quitting. Yeah. Well, you're doing great work up there. And I really appreciate you taking the time to just share what you're doing and all these wonderful treatment options and, and tips and resources that are out there so that we can utilize those good things for here in Tillamook County. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Have a good day and have a good weekend. Tillamook.